Hello and welcome to episode 26 of the Witch in Its podcast. I'm Shy, I'm a witch and I knit and spin and do other crafty things and I like to sit here and talk to you about it for a while every now and then. But as always, sorry about the lighting, it is terrible. I'm going to try and move a lamp. Is that better? A bit better. Yeah, um, it's November, um, obviously, <laughs> and uh, and it is grey outside. It is not raining. It's been sunny today. Like an hour ago, we had five minutes of sun. Yesterday, we had one second of sun. Uh, it's been very grey lately. So, I'm sorry about the lighting. Um, it is, uh, it is what it is. I can't really do anything about it. I've got all the lights on, but I don't own any studio lights, so we'll have to deal with it. Um, yeah, uh, I've been away for a while. I haven't really had anything to share because I've, I've been working on two things. Um, now I'm working on a third thing because I finished one thing, but um, yeah, that's about that. Uh, I haven't really had anything to share, haven't really had any energy to sit down and film. But I'm here today uh, feeling energised because I had a huge tub of coffee right before filming. So uh, let's do this before the caffeine runs out. <laughs> so I've got my big basket of things. I'm going to put it off screen. There we go. Uh, but yeah, oh, I, I think I forgot to say welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Hello everybody who's new. Thank you for subscribing and sticking around. Here, have a cat. It is Chetty Boy. Sorry Chetty. You go back to sleep. Um, but yes, uh, let's get into what I have been working on. My whips. Uh, this is going to be a little bit jumble, I can just tell. Uh, I, as usual, didn't write anything down because we can't have professionality, can we? <laughs> this is like uh, at the seat of your pants style podcasting. I always do this. It's, it's not good, but that's what we have. But anyway, um, my whips. I think I showed this last time I talked to you and it was that much. <laughs> I am working on the Latvian loop by <laughs> that thing with being organised it is not my forte. Uh, Latvian loop by Rene Burton. This is what I'm working on at the moment. This is going to be a Christmas present um, for my grandmother-in-law. Um, so yeah, that is the pattern. I'm really enjoying this knit. Uh, I did, I'm, I'm, a little, uh, I'm a little bit miffed because, you know, this is like my favorite color, when it, uh, except for black. Uh, everything I knit, everything I make is this colour. Well, what you see on the screen is the colour I knit everything out of. It's actually got a bit more of a blue tinge to it in real life. But the website said, this is Roma, by the way, Roma uh, Lamel. The, the website said purple. This is very clearly not purple. But, um, it'll have to work. It's not for me, I said that, it's a Christmas present. But of course I'm knitting it in the colour I knit everything else out of. Oh God, it's terrible. <laughs> I am hopeless. But, uh, yeah, that's the thing. It's uh, um, two and a half repeats in of the pattern and it is supposed to be five repeats long. So it's it's going to be double this length, basically. And then you just put it together like that because it's got a provisionary cast on, a uh, crochet chain cast on and you graft it together at the end and get a huge loop, well 
bigger than this loop, double this size loop um, that you can put around your neck and keep warm and cosy. I'm actually really, really enjoying this knit. Uh, I love colour work and it is quite, it, it's not a pattern that you can just remember uh, really, but um, it's quite simple and it goes quite fast. So I've been knitting on this while listening to podcasts and uh, true crime on YouTube. So uh, it, it has been a fun knit thus far and it is going to be finished ASAP because I am, um, while I am enjoying it, I am getting kind of burnt out on it because it's a long thing to knit with like the same things. But it, it's, it's really, it's really nice, isn't it? I kind of want one for myself. I'm going to regret that. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting burnt out. That, that's, that's an exaggeration. But I can only focus for so long. But I think that says more about where I am mentally and like energy level wise than the pattern. Keeps you engaged because like every row is different. It's fun, I like it. Again, it is knit out of Roma Lamu uh, in, in not purple and undyed. I don't have the tags, but it's like a number thing. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, so that's that one, that's my first whip which I have to sit down and knit on today. So my second whip lives in a new project bag that I made yesterday. Um, I need to give it an iron. <laughs> we had to throw out our iron when we moved and I have forgotten to buy a new one. So all the like seams are very... Oh, that's the uneven side. Have a look at the good side. Uh, all the seams are very, you know, Whoop! <laughs> uh, I don't like that, so I need to give it an iron. But um, yeah, I made this yesterday. I did some, I don't know, is it quilting? When you just do the thing, thing, thing. I haven't sewn things together, I just wanted that kind of texture. But it's just three layers of fabric, so it doesn't really do anything. Um, I need to buy some of that. Uh, squishy interfacing, is it called interfacing? No, that's what makes it stiff in it. I'm not a quilter, uh, but I can say Amy Florence um, inspired me to do something quilt-like for this one. And also my previous project bag I made had a quilted um, bottom. Um, that was a ready-made quilt, well, ready-made quilt. It was like I was asked by my grandmother-in-law to shorten a bed throw and it was like a quilted one. So I just took pieces of that and made part of a project bag out of And I wanted another one with that because I like the sturdy bottom, but I need to buy some of that squishy inside the quilt thing. <laughs> I also have more of this fabric. It's really adorable. It's got like autumn-y things and little foxes and it has owls on it but um, the owl was up here <laughs> so it's it's not on this bag. I'll show you the rest of the fabric because I, I have more because so I'm going to make a bigger project bag as well so that's the fabric with the little fox and where's the owl? There's an owl. So yeah I kind of fell in love with this. Uh, it's past autumn colours outside, it's all grey and I just want snow now, but who doesn't need and want an autumn -y project bag? So yeah, I, I made that yesterday, that was fun. And in this bag, I've been talking about the bag for a really long time now, I'm sorry, um, lives my current sock project, which is this one. And this is... Let me just check who made the pattern. It is On the Fence by Anna Langer. So I am making this 
on the fenced sock. But I am modifying the pattern slightly. It's supposed to have this uh, little colour work section on the toes and it's supposed to have a contrast heel. But I'm just going to do the cuff like that because I am knitting the cuff with the leftovers of my Revenge of the Harpsichord yarn by Vulenvine. And this is a singles which I don't want to put in the heel or a toe, but I think it's fine for a cuff. And this yarn totally matches what I'm knitting the rest of the sock out of, which is Gingerbread House by Stranded Dye Works. So yeah, these totally go together, don't they? It's wonderful. This is probably the messiest cake I've ever made, because <laughs> when I made it, I don't have a ball winder. I stick it on my thumb. I just stick the yarn on my thumb and do the ball winder thing myself because I don't have a ball winder. This is probably the messiest cake I've ever made because I had messed up my thumb so I had to put it on, on that finger and then I ended up putting it on my middle finger instead uh, and I just could not do the thing properly because, I don't know, muscle memory I guess. but. This yarn is so pretty, look at it. I know it won't focus, I'm sorry. Um, but it is adorable and really, really pretty. And I'm so looking forward to having a pair of socks in this. I hope to have these done within a week. I'm a fairly quick sock knitter. And um, yeah, since this is, apart from the top cuff pattern, uh, it's just going to be a vanilla sock. So it's probably going to go kind of fast, unless I get totally like, uh, not another pair of socks. But I really need to get a move on with the box of socks because it's the last year it's, it's going and I really want to finish it this year because I don't think I did last year and the year before that I didn't know about it. And also I need to finish these before November is over because I want to get these in for the festive sock along by Amy Florence. Um, I want to put my, uh, my socks made out of her yarn into her cowl, for sure. So yeah, um, <laughs> I haven't really got that far. Cast these on two days ago, did the non-colour work, non-colour work bit yesterday, which is like half an inch. Uh, but yeah, I, I know I can knit socks fast and I'm going to go visit my parents for a couple of days and I can usually find some knitting time for socks at their place, so I'm probably not going to bring the cowl because I have the pattern on my computer and I'm the kind of person who needs to like mark off a row uh, on Colourworks patterns uh, when I've done them so I don't do them again by mistake or like lose where I am in the pattern. Uh, so I have the patterns in Photoshop with like a layer for each repeat uh, and I can't bring my computer because it's PC so um, but yes that is On the Fence by Anna Langer An Anna Langer I don't know if that's a Swedish person if it is it would be Anna Langer I guess but Anna Langer I guess I don't know sorry um, but yeah in my own sock sized project bag. I really like this one. It came out kind of tall, <laughs> but it's cute. I like it. And Shadow was very, very helpful all day yesterday when I made it, weren't you? Very helpful. On to spinning. I am working my way through the second half of my braid off merino, mulberry silk and bamboo um, by Spin Jones on Etsy. This is the Moroccan Lantern colorway. I am loving this spin so, so much. I had to split, oh, I'm going to make this a chain ply. And, oh look, sun, wow. I'm blowing out like crazy now, hello! <laughs> but we have sun! But yes, um, I was going to just spin the whole thing in one go, but this 
spindle, well not the spindle, the spindle can hold more than 50 grams for sure, it's just that I'm spinning this so fine, um, the, the, the yarn started breaking once I was like past 50 grams, so I have my foot my first half of it, yes, it's on a loo roll, but it hasn't been to the loo. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, that's my foot. The, the light. I'm so sorry, but yes, you can you can see how much it is, I guess. But yeah, um, that's my first 50 grams, and here's not 50 grams, but maybe 30 grams. My card got full and turns out I hadn't removed my previous episode from the camera for some reason. That usually happens automatically when you put it on the computer but hey ho. Uh, yeah, 50 grams, 25 maybe? I don't know. Um, I don't know how much this is but it's not a lot left uh, and yeah going to try and I'm going to bring this with me as well and try and finish it this week and then I'm going to ply it and then I'm going to knit something out of it depending on what weight this turns out to be I hope to be able to knit the bralette top or the bralette um, the bralette top oh my god the ripple bralette or the ripple top I am so sorry about the lighting. I'm going to see if I can... That's slightly better, but I guess we'll have to deal with it. I'm so sorry. Um, this is what happens when you only have natural lighting to work with, but yeah. Uh, really, really enjoying the spin. This fibre is fantastic to spin up, uh, super smooth, and I am really excited about this. But yeah, that's that's an awful long time to talk about whips and it's only three different whips. But yeah, let's get into FOs. Yay! I finished a pair of socks. It is the Hama <sighs> Oh no! <laughs> the uh, I'm gonna see if if I can put some shade on them like uh, <laughs> oh my god, Hermione's everyday socks. This is actually terrible. I think I'll need to have a break. Um, I'll see you in a bit when the sun disappears. I am back. I don't think this is going to get any better. So yeah, um, this is terrible. I'm just going to put a photo of them right here because um, what does one do? Um, I, I need studio lights and a room without windows for filming <laughs> but hey, um, yeah, I, I finished these these are Hermione's Everyday Socks and you can't see it um, they are finished, obviously um, is a knit out of my own hand dyed yarn in peppermint tea. I talk as if I have a company for hand dyeing. I do not. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever repeat it, but I'm a dork, so I like naming things like yarns I dye. So yeah, I dyed this, um, this, uh, <laughs> and it is a Christmassy sock. Uh, I make these for the festive sock along again hashtag festive sock along by amy florence um and yeah i really like hermione's everyday socks that pattern is fantastic and really really fun and really quick um it is by erica lueda um and yeah it is a free pattern on ravelry and it is a uh, one of my favourites to knit. I think I have three or four pairs now of Hermione socks. It is a go-to pattern if I just want some little texture for what I am working on. Um, speaking of texture, thank you to you who uh, suggested sock patterns for me last week. Um, 
the, the on the fence wasn't one of those, but <laughs> I <laughs> I have been saving things for later. I uh, somebody said uh, I should check out the blueberry sock, uh, blueberry waffle socks, and they're really cute. But I have just knit textured socks, and I need um, uh, Petty Harbour earlier this year. And those are also textured almost the same as this one. It's a one stitch difference between the two patterns. And I was just like, nah. What? I didn't want to make another pair of pattern socks, but thank you so much for the suggestions. I will save them for later because this these are these are not the last socks I am making. I am I think I've got five pairs after these to go to have um, a full box of socks, but I need to count. Shorter socks do count, don't they? Because I've, I've made two pairs this year. What's the matter, love? Cheddar is crying. But yeah. So, speaking of hand dyeing, I dyed some yarn. <laughs> Uh, this is just a bit of leftover yarn I had. It's the same base as this. Um, when I bought this yarn, I bought this to, to dye, obviously. Uh, this is a full skein that I've dyed. Uh, I dyed 100 grams in the pepperminty colourway. Uh, but I have been like using the other skein, parts of it for like white contrasting things and stuff like that. So I had I don't know how much this is, um, I think it's a bit less than 50, but yeah. Um, I wanted to try, because I've been, again, binge watching uh, Chemnitz tutorials, and uh, she does a lot of breaking violet, and I wanted to try that, so I bought some violet food colouring, but it broke the other way around, because when she does it, she, it's usually like um, a deep purple to a light light blue, because, uh, at least in that specific food dye, the red strikes faster than the blue dye. Um, but we don't have those red number, blue number dyes. I don't know what was in the dye I bought, but it's probably something like black carrots and stuff like that. Uh, so what happened was it it went from blue to pink and quite light at that. So I dumped it in black, which all washed out, <laughs> except it like dulled everything and made parts of it a bit green. So this is, this is a bit like a pigeon. It's very, very blown out. So I'm going to post a picture of this as well on the screen right here, but this is like a, a pigeon and it's really gorgeous and I'm totally going to knit a pair of socks over this because I think this might be, I'm going to have to weigh it. If it's 50 grams I know it's going to be enough, especially if I do cat's been to the loo, I'm sorry about that. Um, especially if I use a contrasting cuffy and toe, uh, which in that case I'm probably going to pick grey because I have a, oh purple. We'll see what contrast I pick for this. but. I am really pleased with this, uh, and yeah, it was fun to try and, and dye it. Um, the black dye I used was also food colouring, and I tried to... Um, the, the yarn had been soaked in water and vinegar, and I tried to put black on it and then steam it in place, but it just washed out to grey and green in places, but I don't mind. It actually made it for a cool, for a cool colour. I really, really like this. I don't know if I'll be ever be able to replicate it, um, but I'm going to try on a full skein because I would like to knit something bigger out of this. If I could do like several skeins, this would be a really cool shawl, actually. I kind of like that idea. What is the matter? Oh. Mm. But yeah, that is what I have been working on. I think that is everything I have been working on, actually. Um, I don't have any stack, stack, quick, quick, 
stash quiz stash acquisitions that's hard to say uh, stash quisitions <laughs> I don't have any with me uh, however I have been on a tiny bit of a spree when it comes to buying patterns and fiber and yarn um, because I think last week I bought, well there's been two patterns that were like, uh, you know, the um, make a wish Christmas wishes granted thing, um, and two designers at least that I found uh, very generously gave a pattern away. So uh, I have been adding to my collection the uh, a pair of mitts by Hawari Bazaar, uh, Corinne Hawari, Hawari Bazaar Yarn Company on Instagram, and also the Stardust sweater. I've been adding a fair few patterns, a pair of mitts, a sweater, a uh, pair of gnomes, which I'm going to cast on soon because it's going to be a Christmas present, uh, so no, mitts, mittens bought a pair of mittens, which I'm also going to cast on since you'll see them soon. Um, a fair few patterns. Uh, yeah, that happened. And I'm going to decide on whether I'm going to knit the ripple bralette or the ripple top. Help me decide. I cannot. I can want to make both, but I think I'm not going to buy several more patterns this month. Um, I got paid yesterday and like went on a spree. I never do that, but I planned to buy some fibre. Uh, so I bought some fibre for a Christmas present and some fibre for me also, again, from Spin Jones. And it shipped yesterday, so it's not going to come here today, but in time for the next podcast, yeah. Uh, so um, I'm going to show that off when I have it with me. And yeah, uh, I also ordered some yarn yesterday because David wants a scarf, um, uh, like for winter, and I got the idea in my head that hmm, I want to try weaving because you know I don't have enough hobbies as it is, uh, but it's fibre arts. So it's, it's, it's not a new hobby, is it? <laughs> it's all fibre arts, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, no, I have not bought a loom. I am not insane, oh well I am, I would if I could, but I cannot afford a loom. But I um, actually talked to my godmother, like for the first time in a really long time last week and we met up and I, she's also a knitter. And I was like, oh, I really want to try weaving because David wants a new shawl and I'm so sorry about the lighting. And uh, she was like, I have a table loom. She's got an ash ford and I, I get to borrow it. So I'm going to borrow it next week. So we got some yarn for, for the scarf, which I don't have with me again because I bought it yesterday on Etsy. So I'm waiting for it to arrive. <laughs> and I'm like, may or mine, work faster. I want it now. And it won't arrive until next week, I don't think. So, um, but yeah, that is going to be a lot of fun. I never did, well, I have tried weaving way back because uh, like my uh, grandma had a loom, a small loom or she borrowed one. I don't, I don't remember, but I was a kid and she did um, like rugs on it. So I got to try and, and weave some. Um, so I don't really remember anything, but I know how it works and I've, I've done table weaving, like the ta tablet weaving, and um, I know the basics. I just never, I never warped a loom and all of that. I only warped tablets for weaving, but I'm really excited to try and, and we'll see. Maybe this will turn into yet another full-blown obsession and I have to buy a loom um, that might happen. We'll see. I have been looking at, you know, full-size looms. Because people give them away for free. But I do not have the space. 
And I do not have a car to go and pick one up. So I am not going to acquire a loom. <laughs> not right now, maybe in the future, if it turns into an obsession. Like spinning, spinning is a full bonus um, obsession. I love spinning. It is the best thing ever. And I am dying to get a spinning wheel. That will not happen because those are really expensive. I have been looking for those as well on the second hand market, but it's all, you know, broken, you know, ones that are just for decoration, uh, broken antique ones, or it's very expensive, still way out of my budget. Somebody was selling like Bluette wheels for just a little under the, um, the original price and I'm like yeah no maybe not maybe not cannot afford I have a vacation to pay <laughs> because medieval week next summer we've already booked and I need to pay it <laughs> I think that is it for like what I have to talk about I um yeah what I'm going to to work on next is I'm going to cast on the dove colored socks and I designed something for that. We'll see. Um, going to do that, I am going to knit a gnome or two and I am going to weave. Yeah. Yeah. I know other podcasters do this um, section with what I'm reading. And I have not been reading basically anything for a number of years. I keep rereading Earthsea trilogy by Ursula K. Le Guin. I love those books, but I'm, I'm I've been burnt out on reading for so long. Like since getting properly burnt out in uni and quitting uni, uh, I have not been able to like read anything really. I think I've read. I've reread things and I've read one new book and that was in 2013 so it's been quite a while since I read something new um, but I keep seeing people talking well I keep seeing people I keep seeing <laughs> Once Upon a Corgi and Willenwein talking about A Court of Thorns and Roses uh, uh, and like the Sarah I don't know anything about these books but like the Sarah J Maas books and I'm really intrigued. Like, uh, once upon a, uh, Gabby Gales of Once Upon a Corgi got these. Uh, I, you've probably seen it. Um, if you see this podcast, like if you watch this podcast, you probably know about that one already. Because uh, it's not like this is a big podcast. But uh, she got these, the, the whole series, in these really tiny books. And it's adorable. And I kind of want it just because the books are so cute. But I also am really intrigued, like, when it comes to reading them. So, um, I have a mighty need and I might be in the market for buying some books. And I haven't bought a new book in I don't know how long. <laughs> I checked the library and they only have, like, the Court of Thorns and Roses in Swedish. And I'm not about to read in Swedish. I, I don't have a problem with reading in Swedish, it's my second language. Uh, but <laughs> I don't like reading things translated into Swedish, it is terrible. I do not like that. <laughs> Translators do a good job, it's not that, it's just I, I find it awkward. Um, so I am going to try and find them. I don't like reading on a screen and I don't own a Kindle um, and I am yeah, with listening to things, so I'm going to try and find them. I'm probably not going to be able to get the cute small books, but I'm going to have a look-see around and see if I can at least buy the first book, because I want to see if I, if I like it. And I know I could, I could borrow it and try and read it in Swedish just to see if I like the style of it, but it's going to ruin it for me if I read it in Swedish. I'm just not going to like it because it's in Swedish. Um, nothing wrong with Swedish, again. Uh, nothing wrong with, like, people do a good job translating. I just find it really awkward to read any kind of, like, 
fantasy or anything really. I cannot stand reading Harry Potter in Swedish. I cannot stand reading... Oh, I've read uh, Lord of the Rings in Swedish. That was so-so. <laughs> and we have like three different um, translations of Lord of the Rings and yeah, no. It's just not my thing to read in Swedish. It's, it's clunky for me. I prefer reading in English. It's a lot faster. So I'm going to try and find that because I'm really intrigued and who knows, I might get into reading, get back into reading finally after so long. Like before that as well I didn't read a lot. Uh, I used to be, you know, the kind of kid who um, <laughs> was a bit bullied in school and ate books, you know, you, you pick up a book and you've read it, like that. Uh, I used to be that kid. <laughs> I've read so many books and I read like, like really early, I read Lord of the Rings really young and like, I love reading, I loved reading and um, then after like high school I guess, um, I just didn't really read anything, that's where my rereading of my one favourite book started uh, and also rereading of Harry Potter because I really like Harry Potter. Um, so uh, that's when the rereading started and since then I have read Earthsea perhaps six times, like the trilogy, and I've read Harry Potter a number of times and yeah that's about it. I don't even read manga anymore. Like I wanted to read the entire Sailor Moon series because I really like Sailor Moon and I have the whole series, I bought the whole series. I've read two books because I just cannot handle reading. I don't know why. <laughs> but maybe, maybe I will get back into reading. I hope I will because there's been so many instances that I've, I've been, like borrowed books from the library with the intention to read it and then they just loiter in a corner and I don't pick it up and then it's like, oh, I need to go back to the library tomorrow. Oopsie. <laughs> and I'm like, get it again, the same thing happens, and I just give up on it because it's just not going to happen. But yeah, that's the story of me and reading things. It, it's just... I don't even have issues reading, but... Uh, yeah, no, but yeah. I, I hope it'll give me a little kick back into it because I, I miss reading. I like reading. I like exploring new worlds through reading. Um, so yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> Thank you to you who talk about it for inspiring me to consider reading something. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think that is. I think that is about that for this episode. I don't really have anything else. Um, life goes on as usual. And yeah, that's that. <laughs> so thank you so much for hanging out with me today and talking about knitting and spinning and weaving and books. Books, books, books. I really want those tiny ones, they're so cute. And I watched her unbox like um, uh, Gabby of What's Book Corgi. I watched the episode where she unboxed them and it's like, you know, I would have had the same reaction because it's like when you really like I could relate to that thing on a very personal level when you unbox something and it's just you know perfect because it's it's tiny and it's it's perfectly geeky in the right amount of ways and and it's like it has this cool thing I am excited and I haven't even read them so yeah, I, I have a need for those books um, and I, I don't even know if I like the series. <laughs> but yeah, I need to stop talking about books I haven't even read. Um, but yeah, uh, I will probably stop talking here because I have been rambling an awful lot today. Uh, thank you again so so much for hanging out with me and I said that already and that's how I got into my second book tangent. But yeah. <laughs> I am terrible. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, what, what is my hair? Um, what is my entire life? 
But yeah, uh, I will sign off for the third time. I am sorry, I am terrible. I need to do this more often because this happens. I don't know what, what to do and what to say and how to act on camera when it's more than one week between filming. Also, sorry if I've been out of focus this entire episode, but it's the sun. I feel the coffee, like the caffeine, just now, so I need to go. Uh, <laughs> I'm starting to go into crazy territory and I need another cup of coffee to, rem to remedy that. God, I need to edit this heavily, but yeah. Um, thank you for watching and I will see you again in my next episode, uh, maybe in a week, maybe two weeks. We'll see. Uh, I don't know what life will look like coming up. It's, it's been a weird couple of weeks. So, um, yeah. Uh, have a lovely weekend and week after that and however long until I upload again. And I will talk to you again soon. Um, if you like what I do and would like to keep seeing that, um, consider subscribing liking and commenting. I like comments. I like talking to people. Please talk to me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Uh, have a great time. I will see you again soon. Bye!